Hi, welcome to step number three of the SAP process. In step number two, the team was discussing universal design for learning. In this section, in step number three, the team is discussing digital tools that may help support the student. Let's see what the team comes up with. Here's where the fun really begins. So um, Mo's gonna project our flip kit, which for some of you, you guys here at this table haven't seen this before um, if you haven't been through our ACA training. But this is where we're, this is the tool we're gonna use to start identifying um, things that can support John. Before we jump in there though, what I'd like us to do is just identify three priority areas. Um, what are three problems that we wanna walk out of here today with a solution for? Um, so think about all the things we've been talking about and if you could just come up with one thing that you would be really um, happy about if we had a solution um, or something to explore moving forward. Well, I think it's pretty obvious. We've spent a great deal of our time talking about his need for access to all grade level material, right? And I think there's some really great tools to explore for John. I think that we can really help him, especially with the spelling challenges. And then I think a third area would be organization. Um, I think that might seem like an easy one to tackle, but it's one that John definitely needs help with. Um, Brian's mentioned it, and other people have talked about um, him not bringing things. And then in my class, if you don't bring it, you get marked down, and then he feels bad, and I feel bad, but you know, that's just what's happening. So if we can support him in an organization, I think that would be a really um, important area. Definitely agree. Thank you. Great, so those are three awesome priority areas to give him access to grade level content, to support his writing, and specifically considering his spelling skills in that and his organization skills. So let's move into the first priority, um, access to grade level materials. Let's talk about where that occurs first. Um, are there particular classes we're talking about that require a lot of content reading? And quite a bit in my class as well. I think we should also consider that next semester he's going to have history, and even though that's his favorite topic, he's still going to struggle with the reading, for sure. Great. Um, let's delve into writing, and particularly supporting his weak spelling skills through the writing process. Um, I'm going to assume that the biggest setting that occurs is English. Um, does he have a lot of papers in other classes, or is English pretty much it for right now. It's really not an issue in math class. Okay. And I agree, we don't really deal with that in um, tech essentials because we're just so hands-on right into the computer, so I think we're good there. Yeah, and with reading, we're reading. We're not doing as much writing. That kind of transitions over to the English class, so okay. it's not in there to start with. All right, let's talk a little bit more about organization. I'm just going to make an assumption that that's going to cross all classroom environments, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, so now that we have our three priorities um, and a good sense about where they're a problem, let's come up with some ideas and some strategies. And here's where we're going to turn this over to Mo, who's our UDL AT coach, um, and very familiar with what's available to us through the flip kit, um, to look at some some. Um, tools to explore. So let's ask Mo to first kind of address the area of reading. Um, what's available that's going to address that issue of giving him access to grade level content material? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up our tools to support state standards and we'll go right into reading. He uses Chrome, so that's where I'm going to start our kind of survey. I think one book share. Um, I think that is um, going to be a really big area for him. It will allow him to have text electronic. So if he has textbooks, let's say in his new classes, he, he can have access to that not only in the classroom, but also in the home setting. The second tool I'd like to um, kind of have the team explore is Read and Write, which is an extension. And it has some great supports for students that struggle, one, with spelling, as well as reading. So with reading, it has text-to-speech, really good support. Um, with spelling, there are some word prediction that are some options. So I think those are two really um, good tools. 
Um, also, his ability to have access to worksheets. So he could open a PDF, he could have it text to speech, as well as he can annotate right on it. So we just share the PDF to him? Correct. Correct. Teachers can just share it right with him and then okay. can open it up and then go right from read and write. Is there a, a free 30 day trial with that? There is. Um, every student can have um, 30 days for free, and if it's successful, then you know, the team can decide at that point, do we want to go ahead forward and get that as a support on his um, Chromebook? So let's move on to writing, and particularly what can support John with his spelling skills, which have been noted to be so particularly difficult and challenging for him. Um, so, Mo, why don't you direct us to um, maybe what can be a good tool to support John in that particular area? Again, I'm going to suggest that the team look at Read and Write. Um, it has a great word prediction option that can really, you know, the student starts typing and then there's options that pop up. There's also um, voice to text. So mm -hmm. that is huge with a student that has that knowledge base but really gets hung up on um, the spelling component of it. Really good support. So that will help him actually complete his assignments in time or a little bit faster so that he maybe will feel like he's part of the group and not kind of separate it a little bit. Boy, that'll be key for English, for sure. That's a great idea. Well, I think also you can look at um, what's built into the Google Docs itself. Um, there's voice typing in there and just even some editing. So even after he's completed the work, um, going back and checking his spelling like all the students have to do. He still has the legibility issues in math. Is there anything in particular that we can use as a tool for that? You know, let's, I'm going to go ahead and open up the math area in the flip kit. And I'm going to go right to, again, the Chrome supports. And I think one of the first things we might want to look at is DOM. It is an extension that really just takes out the whole fine motor component for writing. So they just keyboard in. It doesn't do the computation, so he's still responsible for that. But again, it really helps to eliminate that um, fine motor challenge. Our final priority area was organization. So let's um, keep track of assignments and things like that is what I primarily heard. So what are some suggestions for John in that area? This is Google Calendar. It has many options. It has color coding. It has um, notifications that he can have sent to his phone. He very rarely forgets his phone. So if we could connect what's on the, the notifications to bring your Chromebook every day, to his phone, which is always in his possession, like most teenagers. Yes. All right, so we have got some great um, priorities. We've got some great strategies or tools to explore um, and where we need to explore them with. Now what we need to do is really get down to a specific action plan. What are we going to do with this information so that when you walk out the door, um, we know who's going to be doing what to make this